What's up, Nick fans? All right. I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, again, again, in this channel, uh, a special guest, a special guest in Nick Fans Brazil, Chris Henry. Uh, everybody knows. Blood in the Garden, okay? Welcome, welcome again in Nick Fans Brazil channel, Chris Henry. Hi, Victor. It's good to be with you. Thank you for having me a second time. I appreciate it. Uh, I talked with you in backstage. I am really, really happy with you in this channel. It's a great honor, great honor. Uh, in this interview, um, I invite uh, you because I want your opinion about New York Knicks, okay? Uh, first of all, first of all, kick, kickly. Uh, I want uh, say it for you my congratulations uh, uh, on your book. I hear that Spike Lee is going to turn uh, his book into a documentary. Uh, I am almost at the end of this book because it's in English, Chris. It took me longer, but I love it. Lots of uh, cool histories. Uh, for example, Patrick Ewing uh, is carried uh, of ghosts <laughs> in my Milwaukee Hotel. So many, so many histories uh, I like in, in your book. Oh, to show for you guys. Oh, this book, oh, this book. Chris, in my interviews in this channel, from uh, a most uh, our interviews, I mentioned this book. Uh, Alan Hur joking with me. Ah, great book, great book. And do you read my book too? <laughs> joking with me in our interview. Uh, yeah. But so many people uh, appreciate your job. Uh, and uh, I really, really, uh, I, I have this book. I really love it. And uh, I need to uh, say for you congratulations for your job. Uh, and uh, really, really happy with you again in this channel. Well, well thank you so much. Yeah, uh, Alan and, and basically everybody else who is a Nick fan who communicates with me on, on Twitter, um, on social media has, has congratulated me. Uh, the book has been a lot more successful than I ever could have dreamed or imagined. Um, I never could have imagined that someone like Spike Lee would want to do a documentary or a docu-series on the book. Uh, Barack Obama put the book on his summer reading list, well, suggesting that people buy the book. It, it, I mean, it's just been one thing after another. And, and when I first agreed to do the book, I never could have imagined any either of those things happening or that it would make the, the bestseller list here in America. Uh, so I'm just very, very grateful. And again, uh, very much appreciate you having me on the show and, and you uh, wishing me well with it. Thank you so much, Victor. Ah, you deserve it. You deserve it. You really deserve it because it, it, it's Thank amazing. You. It's a, a great book. Great book, really. I, I make it interviews around the world uh, talking about the Knicks. For example, uh, I talked with Daniel Han from Nix Germany. Nix Germany, uh, Daniel Han, in your background, has uh, your book, for example. <laughs> Australia, uh -huh. CT, né, from Nick Buzz. Around the world, uh, uh, Nick's fan base know your job and uh, really appreciate. I am a I am fan. I am a fan from uh, you. You know, you know. But... But, Chris, uh, in this interview, I, I invite because I want to talk with you about uh, New York Knicks, okay? I, I want, uh, in this interview, uh, understand, uh, for example, your expectations with this team and uh, new movements uh, in New York Knicks. First of all, I want your opinion, Chris, uh, about these new players in New York Knicks. Jalen Brunson and Isaiah Hartenstein. What do, uh, what's your opinion about these guys in New York Knicks? 
Well, I, I'm interested to see how Jalen Brunson does. Um, I know he had a very first uh, good game and, you know, a very good couple first – his first couple games with the Knicks have been really nice. Obviously, we want to see how the, the season looks. Um, I think he's an interesting sort of player to – uh, build your offense around. Obviously, the Knicks were trying to get Donovan Mitchell, and so it would have looked a little bit different if he had, uh, if they had been able to make the trade for him. Uh, I'm intrigued. You know, I'm very interested to see how it goes. Uh, in some ways, I think maybe this is maybe even better for the Knicks than having him and Mitchell and uh, and having RJ and having Randall. Because at some point I would have felt like they had maybe too many guys that all needed the ball. Uh, it, it sounds great to have a bunch of guys that can all score 20 points. But I also wonder on some level if you have too many of them, uh, if it hurts your offense. Because uh, maybe you need more players that are kind of rooted in defense. And if you had Mitchell mm -hmm. and Brunson together, you would have two very small guards uh, that you would need to try to cover for them on defense. And so maybe your defense wouldn't be as good. So I, I don't think it's as big a loss for the Knicks as the way people were painting it and, and talking about it initially. Uh, but Brunson can really score. He is a very tough player. He gets into the paint. He's efficient. He can shoot a little bit. Uh, I'm curious to see how the ball handling works with this team and whether R.J. Barrett will still get um, as many opportunities as you would like. I think a lot of it will depend on whether Julius Randle has a better year than he had last year. Uh, but I think Brunson will be a good pickup for them. I'm not worried about how much they're paying him. I think it's about fair. It's about average for starting point guards in the league. So I think it's a fine deal for them. And in some ways, I actually think that maybe things are less complicated by not having, uh, by not having Donovan Mitchell. And, and so I think Brunson will kind of get a little bit more of a chance to just show what he can do without Donovan Mitchell there. Um, Isaiah Hartenstein, I think, is a, is a really good pickup for them, too. Uh, someone that can be a backup. I think, you know, just knowing Mitchell Robinson, he'll probably miss some games here and there. He, You know, he's always kind of had injuries here and there. Very efficient player. Uh, a guy that has a little bit of a jump shot. He's a good passer. He's a good rebounder. Um, he's played for a team that was pretty good and in the playoff hunt before. Uh, so I think that this could be a very good pickup for them and and was, you know, a, a good pickup considering that, again, Mitchell Robinson probably will miss some time. And so you want to have someone that's a talented backup that can step in and start if you need him to. And I, I think that this will be a good role for him. I think New York will fall in love with him very, very quickly because of the way he plays. Yes. Uh, you mentioned uh, about Donovan Mitchell. Uh, I agree with you. I agree with you. I just said about Donovan Mitchell because in, in Brazil and uh, in other countries, uh, Donovan Mitchell coming to the Knicks uh, will be so great uh, in marketing. In Brazil, uh, in this off season, so many channels are talking about the Knicks. Uh, uh, in Brazil, talking more about uh, Golden State Warriors uh, and uh, another teams. In this off season, uh, uh, Donovan Mitchell uh, become Nika. Uh, so many, so many lives, so many uh, subjects in the another uh, channels in Brazil, and uh, just, just, just it for me. But I agree with you. Um, Jalen Brunson can be so so uh, great for the, from the Knicks because I like your energy, I like uh, uh, your skills. Jalen Brunson, uh, for me, it's not a PG from my dreams. I don't think it's a franchise player, but mm -hmm. it's a good player. Knicks needs a. Um, Solid PG a long time ago, a long time ago, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, you yeah. know, you know, and uh, I believe uh, Jalen Brunson uh, can uh, help so much this team. 
Uh, and uh, I, I, I am curious. You, you mentioned uh, in your in your comment, but uh, I want to uh, ask for you. Uh, do do you do you think uh, Jalen Brunson uh, can uh, help uh, can uh, help more Julius Randall? Um, Julius Randle, for example, can be better playing with Jalen Brunson in the next season. I, I think a lot of Knicks fans are hoping for that. And I, you know, honestly, I thought last year that having uh, Kimball Walker and having Evan Fournier would help him. Uh, and we never really got a full chance to see that um, because Kimball Walker was not healthy and, you know, didn't play that much and even when he did play that much he was you know two or three games later he was going to be out because of injury because of his knees uh evan fournier is someone that thrives mostly off other people creating for him and and setting up for him so that he can get an open shot uh he's not he can handle the ball a little bit but he's he's certainly not going to really run point for you which is why they used alec burks the way they did um yes So this is a this is a different opportunity to have Jalen Brunson um, run the show for them. Can it help them? Possibly. I, I'm not convinced yet with Randall. Part of me feels like Randall has to do for himself. Uh, mm -hmm. He, you know, it, it's very easy to look at the last two years and say that uh, two years ago that he shot really, really well, better than he ever has. And he had a certain demeanor and a certain sort of uh, confidence that came from that. And it was in a great mood all the time because the Knicks were overachieving. And it's very easy to look at last year and say that when all those things were happening in reverse or in the opposite, where he was playing really poorly and not shooting as well as he was used to, that he had a very sour attitude. Um, so I would love to think that getting a better point guard and, a, and someone that is a point guard would help Randall generally having a, a, a solid point guard helps everyone and it helps set everyone up. But I also think that Randall could help himself by not, how would you say it? I'm trying to think of a way that would translate, but like the idea of hijacking, taking something over, you mm -hmm. can't hijack possessions. You can't, you can't stop the offense just because you feel like you need a shot. And there are times that I think Randall does that. Uh, maybe having a point guard will stop him from doing that and stop the selfishness. Uh, but that some of that is up to Randall, and I'm not sure whether having a better point guard will. But I'm I'm very curious. I think that there's a chance that it could help everyone, him included. And again, I also think that maybe not getting Donovan Mitchell may help a little bit because I think that someone like Randall would be more likely to feel like he's not getting enough shots and not getting enough possessions for just him if you have Mitchell and Brunson and Barrett and Randall all on the same team, not to mention that even, you know, the other night when Mitchell Robinson is getting possessions where it, it looks like he's trying to kind of create offense for himself too, through post-ups yes. or through, you know, things like that. So it, it it's going to be a little bit different. You're going to have a point guard that is looking to score more for himself, but uh, Brunson is a, is an efficient scorer. So it's not a bad thing when he's looking for his shot. We've seen that it can be a bad thing when Randall tries to force his shot. So if it can stop Randall from forcing so much, then it could be great for the Knicks offense. I man, man, man. I am disappointed with Randall. But I am Nick fan. I love New York Knicks, Chris. So uh <laughs> Nick uh Randall, play better. Just play better. Uh Randall playing better. Knicks. Uh, will be better in the next season, but I am disappointed because uh, with your attitudes uh, in the next in the last season, and so many reasons. But I really hope now uh, Julius Randle help the Knicks now in the the next season. And uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, uh, I I think uh, it uh, has a different skills. Comparative with Mitchell Robinson, Jericho Sings, and uh, can be useful uh, from this team. Open the floor, uh, drives for Jalen Brunson, RJ Barrett, Julius Randle, good passer, uh, can shoot <laughs> yeah, two, three points because you know 
Mitchell Robinson more dunks, né? Another excuse, another, another style. Uh, so it can be useful from this team. Um, and uh, I won't uh, talk with you about your your situation, RJ Barrett uh, extension. What do you think about uh, the uh, RJ Barrett extension? I, I think it's about. It, it, it seems fair. It, it, it seems a little bit high. Um, I think RJ Barrett is a strange situation because normally when you give out the kind of money that the Knicks just gave him, mm -hmm. you're talking about um, you're talking about a player that you think can be an all star. And obviously mm -hmm. Julius Randle was getting about, you know, it's getting about the same amount of money. So I, I don't think it's a crazy contract. It's not really, really bad. Um, you know, I, I imagine the Knicks probably would have liked to have paid maybe a little bit less. Um, mm -hmm. but if you're RJ Barrett, you probably are thinking like, I've got the potential to be an all-star. Now mm -hmm. it's time for him to show that. And maybe think about it this way. Um, it would be very easy to imagine, um, RJ Barrett, you know, being about the player he is now. And if he doesn't get a lot better in the next couple of years, he probably will not make an all-star team. He probably needs mm -hmm. to take another jump. And, and obviously, mm -hmm. he's young enough to do that. But if you consider that they're going to pay him the contract he just got and Randall the contract that he got and Brunson the contract that he got, all, like you need one of these guys to probably take the next step and become an all-star. And like you were saying about Brunson, he's probably not a franchise player. Um And so it's some, my, my biggest question about the Knicks is not about Barrett's contract or Brunson or Randall, but it's kind of like, who's going to become your franchise player? Mm -hmm. uh, or are you still going out and trying to find that person? They obviously tried to get Mitchell. They weren't able to do it. So they've got all these picks left over. Um, mm -hmm. Who are you going to build this team around? And you, there's really rarely ever does a team win a championship with just one all-star or just one superstar. Uh, we've seen it happen a couple of times, but it's very, very rare. We, 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 obviously, we saw Steph and the Warriors just win it, but even with that, you still have Draymond. You still have, Wiggins made the all-star team, although maybe some people would say he didn't deserve it. Um, we saw Dirk Nowitzki win it with the Mavs, but it's very, very rare that a team with one star or superstar wins a championship. And so the Knicks need at least one of these guys to make a jump. You would think it probably still need to find one guy to be like a legitimate superstar um, or for all of their guys to become all-stars, uh, all these guys. And uh, so, you know, I think Barrett, it's, it's still, we, we still want to see him make another jump. Uh, mm -hmm. He's not quite as efficient as you would like. He's not quite solid enough from the line as you would like. Uh, he's, decent and good at a lot of things, but he's not really great at anything yet. Um, and so you'd like to see him make the jump toward being more consistent and, um, and showing that he's truly worth that contract. The best case scenario, if you're the Knicks is that because of how young RJ is that you, uh, that he actually somehow outplays this contract that maybe he's an all-star a couple of times that he's an all NBA mm -hmm. defender a couple of times. And then, you just lock him in on another contract and you pay him a super max. That would be great if he becomes a superstar. I don't know that anyone's expecting that. I think we're all pretty clear on the fact that he's probably not going to become John Morant or Zion Williamson. Um, but he's shown enough good things to think that he's capable of being an all-star. And I think that's really all you want for him is to show that he can be one of the guys that helps this franchise toward a championship in the next few years. É, man. Uh, in this channel, uh, people in Brazil, United States, uh, people knows, né? Everybody knows. I believe so much, né? In, in, in this guy. I, I really hope, né? Uh, RJ Barrett uh, has a great future. I believe. I super believe in RJ Barrett, but uh, we'll see, né? We'll see uh, in future. Uh, Nick Fans Base, uh, Chris, uh, talks so much in this offseason about it, uh, two guys, two players, uh, Kenton Grimes and Evan Fournier. 
uh, who this guy is. You know, you know about this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I want your opinion about uh, this subject. What do you think about uh, can be starter? Uh, what do you do you think about Evan Fournier versus Quentin Grimes? Yeah, well, my, my personal opinion is that I think Grimes is ready to start. Um, I don't think it's about um, career accomplishments. I know that Evan Fournier broke the record last year. I think it was John Starks' yes. record or uh, that, yes, that he broke last points. year. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I understand that that is incredibly valuable in today's NBA to make threes. It's also incredibly valuable in every year in the NBA to be able to defend. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, when Tom Thibodeau's teams are excelling and overachieving, it's normally because they defend at a really high level. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think Evan Fournier really helps you do that. Uh, he absolutely has a value on this team and in and, and the league as a, as a floor spacer, as a three-point shooter, which I think the Knicks will need that. You know, Barrett has times where he goes cold. Randall is not a good three-point shooter for his career. Uh, I think Brunson is, you know, one of the better shooters they'll have, but Fournier is really like the, the three point threat that they've got in their current starting lineup. I don't think that Quentin Grimes will start at least not to begin the season because Tom Thibodeau was very clear in saying that Evan mm -hmm. kind of has the lead in his mind. And on top of that, Quentin Grimes is hurt to start the season. So, or at least the preseason. So any chance that he would have had of winning the job, through preseason has kind of been uh, taken off the table already because he hasn't had a full preseason. So that's just reality. That's not, that shouldn't be surprising. I understand that Knicks fans will be disappointed, especially younger ones because um, they think Quentin Grimes is kind of a, you know, one of the players that they'll build their future around. Uh, and I think people were the people that were happy that the Knicks didn't get Donovan Mitchell were happy because one, The Knicks don't have to use all those picks. But two, and for some people, I think the second part was more important. Quentin Grimes is a is the sort of player that I think every championship team will have. Someone mm -hmm. that can knock down threes and someone that can defend. Someone that plays with a, a high motor that is energetic, um, who doesn't have to get a lot of shots. But if he's getting a lot of shots, it's probably a good thing because he is an accurate shooter. So... Uh, Quentin Grimes could be very valuable for this team. Um, I would like to see him start just because I think that at times the Knicks aren't great on defense, and I think Quentin Grimes would help them be closer to that. But I'm not I'm not surprised. This is who Tom Thibodeau's kind of always been. He's kind of always leaned more on veterans. And, uh, you know, and Quentin Grimes, they kind of even break into the lineup last year, uh, and it required injuries for him to get his chance last year. So, um I understand that he won Knicks fans over very quickly. I expect that it will take longer for Tom Thibodeau because that's kind of how he's always been, whether it was in Chicago or Minnesota or now here in New York. Um, I, I, I agree with you. And uh, I think he, um, Evan Fournier can be uh, great for, from the Knicks from the bench, from the bench. Uh, uh, puts your three points on fire. I joke uh, with my friend Ron from Stilnik Fans Channel. Uh, we we need to buy a, a glass from uh, Evan Fournier. See, in all games, Chris, Boston Celtics, just Boston Celtics, Evan <laughs> Fournier, yeah. MVP, MVP. Yeah. <laughs> Every time they play the Celtics, he has a, the best game of his life. But uh, yeah, I mean, he, you know, in fairness to him, like I know that that was the joke for most of last season. He did have a pr like he started really slowly, really, yes. really slowly. He got better as the year went on. I think people kind of understood what his shortcomings are and where he's not very good. He's not very good defensively. Um, mm -hmm. He's you know, he can score here and there. But most of the time, it's just that he's a really effective three-point shooter and th there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that i just think that um you should want to put out the best starting five you have and you know and quite frankly you know my, my hope if i was a knicks fan which i always say I'm, i'm just a you know i'm just a reporter i don't really 
root for any mm-hmm. of the teams in the league. But yes. if I were a Knicks fan, what I would want from Tom Thibodeau is just, okay, fine. You're not going to start Quentin Grimes. You favor veteran players. I get it. It, does, it doesn't surprise me that that's what you're doing. But if Quentin Grimes has played better over the course of a game, or if he has a stretch of the season that he's playing better than Evan mm-hmm. Fournier, just use Quentin Grimes at the end of games. Don't don't give Evan Fournier an advantage and play him at the end just because he's been in the league longer. Give give Grimes a chance. Uh, and and you know, just like you gave him a chance last year and he showed you to look very smart, or some fans would say very dumb because you waited so long to give him a chance. But I, you know, I think that more often than not, a player like that who is as consistent as what Quentin Grimes looked like will, will make you look smart for using him more. And I think that you want to, at some point it would be nice for them to kind of start turning over the reins to Quentin Grimes more than, uh, than Evan Fournier, especially at the end of games. If, if Grimes is playing better. Um, I, I may, uh, people mention a uh, uh, hashtag free, free OB. I mentioned hashtag free, Grimes, free Grimes. <laughs> I think that one's more important for them. I mean, I, I understand. Fan, I think every team, every fan base, every team falls in love with their young players. Mm-hmm. The Knicks fans, especially, we all know why. You know, I wrote about this several years ago and then it kind of caught on. It's that stat about Charlie Ward and the fact that, you know, up until recently with RJ Barrett, that they had not re signed a first round pick. Uh, Mm -hmm. to a multi-year deal since Charlie Ward in 1999. So, you know, it it had been more than 20 years since they'd done that. Um, So I think Knicks fans fall in love. I mean, I remember when I covered the team for the Wall Street Journal, Iman Shumpert, and before that it was Landry Fields and Mozgov and Gallinari. And you go down the list. and, And Porzingis, obviously, people fell in love with. People were in love with Jeremy Lin. It always happens, uh, and it it happens with players that sometimes are not really that good, um, you know. But they might have a good stretch during the end of a season where the Knicks are already out of the playoff race, so the young guys get more time, so their numbers kind of get inflated. Um, so I understand every, and that happens with every team. It especially happens with the bad teams and the teams that don't make the playoffs because fans don't have anything else to get excited about except the future. Um, Yes. So I understand it. Obi, I I do think, has some real skill. He's got some real talent. He's very good in the open floor. He has a jumper, you know, that maybe is not always the most consistent, but he has real potential. Um, It doesn't Mm -hmm. surprise me that Thibodeau doesn't want to play him a little bit more because he's not the greatest defender, at least not all the time. Um, And also he plays a position that, as of a year ago, the guy that you thought was the best player on your team was also playing <laughs> yes. that position. So he's he's not going to get that much time. Like if Randall's playing decently at all, he's probably not going to play that much. Oh, and this was the big controversy a week ago that Thibodeau said that he didn't see playing Randall and Obi together that much and that people would like to see it more. Okay, again, Thibodeau is a defensive, a, a defense-oriented coach. So even yes. if those two guys could play a little bit more together, that's not really the makings of a great defense to have them both on the court together at the same time. So uh, I understand people wanting Obi to play more. He should play a little bit more. Uh, I think that Grimes, like you said, is is the player that they would probably get more mileage out of right now. And I think that they would have the better chance of maybe seeing him get a lot more playing time because he – does most of the stuff that Fournier does, um, mm-hmm. but also is a much better defender than Fournier is. With with Obi, he does some things that Randall isn't doing, um, but neither one of them is great on defense, really. And so to me, you know, I understand Thibodeau and other people hoping and praying that Randall will get back to his all-NBA sort of season because yes. he's shown you the potential of what he can do when everything is perfect uh, for him. I, I don't think that uh, I don't think Fournier Fournier's upside is not as great uh, as Grimes's, and I think that you know we we know that Randall has more upside to what he's doing if he's playing well. So I, I would understand uh, the argument for Grimes a little bit more than Obi. I understand Knicks fans want both of them to play all the time, but 
uh, I think Grimes makes more sense to be in the lineup more. You mentioned uh, uh, Grimes now, uh, uh, with my question, and Obi Taupin, uh, this is younger car, this is younger players uh, from the Knicks. Uh, how, uh, uh, what's your opinion about another players, these younger players from the Knicks? Uh, for example, Emmanuel Kikley, McBride, uh, and other players. I and uh, I am uh, worry uh, about Ken Reg, for example, because I I, I think it's a uh, Ken Reg. It's a good player, but I can't see this player uh, has a great chance in this team. I I don't see my opinion. Okay, uh, I want your opinion about uh, these younger players you mentioned. Uh, Obi Topping and Kenton Grimes, okay. But I, 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 I want your opinion about the younger players uh, in general, uh, like for example Manuel Kikley and uh, another players. What's your opinion about this? I, I think they've got some really intriguing. I, I know I've used that word a couple times, but like intriguing players. I think that quickly. Um, They're, and they're all young enough to where they could still get a lot better. Uh, Quickly is someone who, when he first got to the team, I didn't think very much of his defense. Um, he was really rare in how confident he was that you watch the games and he is someone that will pull up from 25 feet away and, you know, take jump shots in transition. Um which normally you're watching Steph Curry and Damian Lillard do that. You're not watching rookies and second year players do that. Um, but mm -hmm. he makes a decent amount of them. We watched him do some of it in the, in the Hawks series when they made the playoff um, where he did not shoot particularly well in that series, but he was not afraid to shoot. Um, and I think Tom Thibodeau, even the other day was saying that people kind of reduced quickly to being, um, a player that is all he can do is play offense, but he he's he's tall enough and has enough length and, you know, mm -hmm. his arms are long enough to really make an impact on defense as well. Um, so sometimes he takes bad shots. Uh, I remember one play last year. I can't remember which game he I think they were in transition. They had a fast break. He was inside the three point line like he was going toward the basket and like he dribbled all the way back out to take a three. And it was kind of like, what was mm -hmm. that? So. Sometimes I he remember. wants to score a little bit too much, um, but he absolutely has talent. Um, it's a nice guy. Yes. I, you mentioned Spike Lee earlier, and uh, Spike made a point of mentioning or, or not mentioning, but I I sat next to Spike yeah. from one of the games uh, courtside, and uh -huh. um, this was actually a game at the Garden. Uh, the Knicks were playing the next day, but we were at a college game, and Emmanuel quickly came to the game and was sitting next to us and spike made a point of introducing me and so me and emmanuel were talking a little bit very nice guy I met his family but you know I, i i think that he's got room to improve but i under excited about him he's got a, a pretty decent offensive game um he is a good score for them in moments where maybe they don't have much offense from anybody else um and i think he's got some potential on defense to get better mm -hmm. and, uh You know, and I understand that it would also be very frustrating for the Knicks sometimes to not see him getting as many opportunities as you would like um, when they're using Alec Burks and all these other people at point guard and not more of quickly or not trying to use him when Derrick Rose is out and Kimba Walker's out. Um, you would think that quickly would get those opportunities. So I'm excited to kind of see what happens for him in year three. Uh, Deuce McBride is someone that, I was very surprised did not get more chances last year, given that he is someone that is not the biggest scorer, but can really defend mm -hmm. and really works hard. Normally the sort of player that gets a lot of opportunities in a Tom Thibodeau system. Um, and it seems like every time he gets a chance is, is doing those things is defending as hard as he can is working hard. Um, doesn't mean that he'll be a star. Doesn't mean that he'll <laughs> yes. have a regular role every night, but it seemed like there were more opportunities there than, than what Tom Thibodeau used him for. Um, Cam Reddish is the one that I don't, like you said, I don't really know that he fits. And uh, mm -hmm. I understood why 
the Knicks took a chance on him. They weren't giving up all that much to get him. They gave up Kevin Knox, who was someone that even from his rookie year was putting up statistics that weren't very, it wasn't very clear that he even really belonged in the NBA. You had to try him because you had spent the first round pick on him. But statistically, there were, there were indications right away that he might not even be good enough to be in the NBA for more than a year or two. And I think we're, you know, the Hawks have not really used him. So it wouldn't be surprising if he's not in the NBA uh, in the next year or two. Uh, so the idea that you were going to trade him, and I think, what, what was it, that and the second round pick that they yes. gave up to get Cam Reddish, that's not that big of a gamble uh, for someone that is looking for a bigger role. You know, it doesn't surprise me that Cam Reddish was excited to play for a team in a bigger city than Atlanta and to play with the Knicks. Um, he, to me, he has not fit that well into what they do. He's a player that, um, he takes pretty difficult shots sometimes. Uh, it's a team that already kind of doesn't have the most shots to go around depending mm -hmm. on whether you're playing with the bench or the, the starters. Uh, we, we talked about how the Knicks might have dodged a bullet in a way by not getting Donovan Mitchell because maybe he wouldn't have fit the team that well. My fear with Reddish is that he's really talented, but maybe not a great fit with this team. He's not, and he, he's someone that has a ton of potential because he's still very young as well. Um, but Tom Thibodeau's not the sort of coach that has a ton of patience to like watch you go yes. through growing pains on the court. Mm -hmm. And some fans hate Tom Thibodeau because of that. Um, <laughs> but he, but you know, he knows something about what he's doing. He's won a lot of games before. Um, there's a reason that he's been to conference finals before. Um, you know, I, I, I think, I just don't think Cam Reddish is a great fit. I think sometimes because he ha has stretches where maybe he's not going to play or games where he doesn't play that when he does get a chance that he, it almost feels like he wants to make everything happen every single moment he's out there. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, every now and then he has a, a really nice play, like the layup he had the other night. But sometimes he's just trying to do a little bit too much when just getting the little things done, like all the reasons that I think Knicks fans really, really love Quentin Grimes. He works really hard and he's normally not going to make really bad mistakes because he's just trying to make the smart play. And I feel like Cam Reddish is trying to make the spectacular play a lot of times. And he's trying to make the really difficult shot. Um, he had a, a, a jumper the other night that he took that reminded me a lot of like a shot that J.R. Smith would have taken. Um, mm -hmm. Which when those shots go in, they look wonderful. And there's a whole reason, you know, there's a reason that, um, that fans love players like J.R. when he plays well. But there are also reasons that you really, really get frustrated with Jr. because he does stuff that he doesn't have to do because it might look better. And I think uh, Cam mm -hmm. Reddish does some things like that too. Uh, and Derek Rose, uh, do you have uh, expectations yet with this guy, or you see uh, the this player? Uh, it's very important uh, help uh, developing uh, players help. Uh, these younger players. What do you think? What's your uh, talks uh, about Derek Rose? I think that Derek, um, I think it's it's starting to get pretty late in his career to have expectations. And, and, and really, that was one of my problems with the Knicks before, is that um, last year, for instance, and I think even the year before when they made the playoffs, they relied really, really, really heavily on Derrick Rose, despite the fact that for years, you know, I live mm -hmm. in Chicago where Derrick was a superstar for a few years. Um, even in Chicago, it reached a point where you really couldn't rely on him anymore or have expectations for him after a while just because of his injuries. If he's healthy, mm -hmm. you can absolutely rely on him. Now he's getting to the point age-wise where I don't think, even if it was just his age you were focusing on, you would say we have to start relying on him a little bit less. Um, but especially when you consider how injured he's been over the course of his life. Um, so my real expectation for him is that he helps the bench unit and maybe play with the starters a little bit. Um, but my real expectation is that he's going to mentor guys, that he's going to help the bench unit a little bit and maybe help Emmanuel qu quickly grow 
a little bit. Um, I imagine that he'll be playing with quickly a lot um, off the bench. Um, my hope and expectation for him is that he'll be able to play at least 55 or 60 games. Um, and my hope for him would be that the Knicks don't, even if Derrick Rose has a good season and is playing well and he's efficient, that Tom Thibodeau not use him so much and the Knicks not use him so much to where he gets hurt again. Obviously, he could get hurt without playing a whole lot, too. But you don't – like the Knicks, I, I just kind of felt like they were getting to a point a couple of years ago when they made the playoffs where remember when – um, what was the name of the guard they had? Alfred Payton, where he yes. had struggled so yes. much in the regular season and Knicks fans hated Tom Thibodeau because he was still going to start – Alfred Payton, no matter what. <laughs> so it meant that Derrick Rose was going to play 35 minutes in the playoffs, even though he wasn't the starter. And then they finally made Derrick Rose the starter <laughs> at the end of the playoffs. I get that you have to do what you have to do in the playoffs, but at a certain point, we know that Derrick Rose is someone that is pretty injury prone. It's one of the things I hate most about um, mm -hmm. basketball is just that sometimes really great players, um, it's out of their control that they get hurt, but – Derek Rose in particular, just with his knee situation. So um, my hope is that he'll, you know, that he could play two thirds or three quarters of the games and, and not have a serious injury that lingers the whole year. Um, I don't have expectations beyond that for him, but it seems like he's taking very seriously the idea of being a mentor for these young players. There's a lot of young players on the team. There are a lot of young guards and wings on the team. And so um just the way he's talked about it. And frankly, the way he's talked about it, it kind of sounded like he was speaking almost directly to Julius Randall when he was saying that the thing that you can control is your attitude and how you approach work. And, um, and then Julius Randall walked into the interview while he was talking about it. It was kind of funny timing, mm -hmm. but um, Derek Rose seems to have uh, a good mindset about that. He realizes that sometimes the only thing you can control the only thing you can control is is how you approach the job. And uh, certain people on the team would be um, better for hearing that sort of message. So that's that's really one of the main things I expect from him. I, I do think that he'll be helpful for them on the court. But I also think that they've got enough guys now um, with Brunson, Quickly, and you would hope with Miles McBride too that, uh, yes. that, 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 they, that they would be able to rely on Derek a little bit less. Uh, from a playmaking standpoint this year? Uh, I love Dark Rose, Chris. I love. But, but I understand your point and I agree your point. Uh, I think the same. Uh, but, uh, man, Dark Rose, uh, like a mentor, uh, can be important in this team. Uh, but uh, I, bro, Derek Rose. He could. Uh, he could also be. He could also be way more than that. I don't. I don't want to reduce him to. Look, look on the Miami Heat. You've got Udonis Haslam, who's forty-two, who uh -huh. plays five games a year. You know, Derek Rose is not that. He's not someone that can't play. He he can be very effective. Um, but mm -hmm. my fear, like I was saying, is that he sometimes can be so effective to where. Tom Thibodeau is tempted to use him a lot and to play him a lot. And yes. I don't know that that's even best for Derek. Um, it would be like, look, I, I, I like candles. It would be like if I used this can <laughs> for 10 hours a day when it's, you see, it's a very small candle. Derek Rose is someone that might not have that much left in his knees in the tank, similar to what we saw yes. with Kemba. Derek is more effective than Kimba, but if you know that he only has so much left, you don't want to use it all the time. And uh, mm -hmm. so the Knicks would be very smart to use him and, and maybe sit him out on back to backs or, you know, or to try to limit him to 15 minutes a night at this point, um, just so that you don't burn him out. But he's not, yes. he, he's still effective. I just don't want to see them burn him out. Uh, so he can be more than a mentor, but I think that mentorship is one of his most important qualities right now for the Knicks, I think. No, no I agree. Super agree with you. Super agree. Uh, in the last question, Chris, last question. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want uh, your opinion. Uh, what's your expectations with the New York Knicks in the next season? Uh, do you believe uh, in playing? 
do you believe playing and playoff later? Uh, do you believe playoffs? Uh, six six seats, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your expectation? Because I know uh, uh, this conference, it's very hard. Very it's hard. It's a good conference. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I, I think if I had to guess, I would say that I think that they'll end up as a play-in team. Uh, you know, and I think there are a, a few other teams that are in that sort of ballpark. I think the Bulls, quite frankly, a team that I thought would be very good last year, and they were for most of the season. They were in first place in the East for more than half the season. Um, so I, I, I think that the Bulls are going to drop off quite a bit this year from what they were last year into that play-in range. I think the Knicks are going to kind of move up into that play-in range. I'm not completely convinced that they're good enough to make the playoffs without needing a play-in game. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's, I mean, look, the top six is going to be pretty good. I mean, I think we still need to see what happens with Boston, with all the stuff with Ime Udoka, um, but they still have more talent on paper than the Knicks do. Um, mm -hmm. Milwaukee, if Giannis is healthy, um, and Drew Holiday is healthy, we don't know how quickly Middleton will be back, but like Milwaukee should be at the top of the conference. Miami, um, even if we aren't sure exactly how good they'll be, they were just the number one seed. So even if they fall off quite a bit, you would have to think that they'll fall off a lot to, to miss the playoffs or, you know, to need the play in to get in. So like those three teams, Philly, Philadelphia should be really good this season. I think, uh, you know, if Embiid is healthy, Harden is, you know, I don't know if he was fully healthy last year, but having him back, Tyrese Maxey looks like he should make a jump again. Um, and they've got, you know, some really good talent off the bench this season. Uh, they got PJ Tucker and still PJ Tucker from Miami. So Philly should be good. That's four teams right there. Um, and, there, you know, there's that we haven't even mentioned Atlanta and whether Atlanta might do better with DeJounte Murray. Uh, I, I just don't quite see the Knicks in that top five, top six. I could see them finishing seventh or eighth. Um, I think that they've got a better argument than a team like Detroit. Um, you know, I don't think Orlando's quite ready. And even if they were, they've had a couple injuries already. Uh, you know, I don't think Washington will be that great this year. Bradley Bill starting the season with COVID, which is not great. Um, you know, so I, I, I think that they'll be better than a, a handful of teams. And I think that they'll be right there in that plan conversation. I still think the Knicks are at least one key guy away. Um, and let's be honest too. If Brunson were to get hurt, which Brunson has had a really good track record with injuries, but he is kind of the sole guy that we look at and we say like, this is the reason the Knicks should be better. And they should be. I think they will be. But if, if anything were to happen to him, uh, all of a sudden you're running into some of the same sort of conversation we were having last year about their point guard situation. How do you manage to not overextend Derrick Rose and maybe play him too much? Uh, will Tom Thibodeau play Deuce McBride like if he has to? If not, all of a sudden you're relying a lot on quickly and Rose. Uh, in place of someone like uh, Brunson, who was th the main reason you would think that the team will do better this year. So I, you know, they could use a big jump from their young guys. They could use um, a nice boost from Brunson, who maybe can spread his wings a little bit more as the lead guy. Um, but really, I think, again, I think a lot of it and Randall being a lot better. And I don't know yet. You asked me earlier, do I think that Brunson will help Randall? I don't know. <laughs> I, I wish I did. <laughs> uh, but it's hard, to, it's hard to know where to place them without seeing how much better Randall is than he was last year. Because if he's, if he's as bad as he was last year, or as, as frustrating as he was last year, and has the sort of attitude that he had last year, um, I just don't see it for the Knicks. You know, like maybe is the last team in or something. But if he's decent or if he's good, and Brunson does what he's expected to do, I think that they could finish as a play playoff team without needing a play-in game. Uh, but I think it's most likely that they are somewhere in that 8 to 10 range and that they might need help, or 7 to 10 range, and that they might need a little bit of help to get into the playoffs or win a play-in game to make it into the playoffs. Uh, about Randall, 
uh, Randall needs helps Randall. <laughs> Randall needs uh, helps yourself. Uh, uh, about uh, this team, Chris, uh, I think I, I believe uh, uh, Nick's uh, playing later playoffs. Really, I believe uh, in, in uh, season in the next season. I believe in in four forty one uh, uh, victories. Nah? And but but uh, I remember in, in the pandemic season, nobody nobody uh, believe in in Knicks. Nobody uh, mm -hmm. Knicks uh, coming to playoffs. I believe I am I am crazy, bro. <laughs> I am I am crazy. I believe in. The, I have a, a video in this channel. I uh, I talked about this, but um, I remember uh, Nick's uh, Alfred Payton was a point guard. <laughs> this team in pandemic season and Nick's uh, coming to playoffs. Yeah. Now uh, we we have uh, Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson is not a franchise player, etc. Okay, but Nix has a solid PG now. Um, so I I want uh, this team surprise me sur surprise me in the season. Okay, I I I know now uh, uh, our conference is very hard, very hard, but. I I talk I, I talked uh, about the pandemic season. Nobody uh, and R.J. Barrett mentioned your your interview. Uh, Knicks uh, will shock. Né? Okay, I, I understand. Né? And in these interviews <laughs> pre-season, uh, like uh, come back to the school. Uh, Oh, oh, my friends! I back to the school. Yes, it's a great year. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes. It's But... very fun for the first couple of days, and then you're like, "Oh boy, what did I get myself into?" <laughs> But yeah, I, I think you make a really good point that um, it this is the fun part of the season for NBA fans yes. in general. Is that I think. Uh, In, in, in English, there's a, a phrase called hope springs eternal, uh, uh -huh. that you always kind of have hope. And that especially at the beginning of a process that you, you go on with high hopes. Everybody talks about how great their summer vacation was, how they went and traveled, how they gained 10 pounds of muscle, how they were in the gym all the time. Uh, and all those things could be true. The Knicks might have been working very hard during the offseason. Uh, sometimes that pays dividends and that that benefits you julius randall mm -hmm. you know lost a lot of fat um body fat a couple years ago and then was all nba uh i don't know if he didn't work as hard last off season or if he did and it just didn't work out as well maybe having the fans back in the arena was more difficult i'm not sure maybe he was struggling with confidence after the atlanta series and the playoffs we'll never know exactly what was happening last year um It just seemed like the attitude for him was not as good. I don't try to, um, in English, you would call it like psychoanalyze someone. I would never try to say exactly what wasn't working for him or what, you know, he just didn't seem the happiest on the court. Obviously, he, he said some things that fans did not like. He did some things that fans did not like. Uh, it just didn't seem like there was a joy to his game last year. So, I, I'm not going to put it on his attitude this year, but I just think if he's better and if he's anywhere near what he was two years ago, he doesn't need to be as good. But if he he's somewhere in between what he was uh, two years ago and what he was last year, somewhere in the middle of that, that would be a huge win for the Knicks, along with Brunson. If Barrett kind of uses this contract and still has a hunger to his game, uh, even after getting the contract, If you get just enough contributions from your other young guys, Grimes takes another step, quickly gets more of a role. Derrick Rose is more healthy than he was last year. All those things combined, having Hartenstein in the lineup, uh, if Thibodeau lets the young guys play a little bit more and actually think about what happened with Grimes once Grimes got an opportunity. If some of your young guys take an opportunity and kind of run with it the way that Grimes did last year, 
and Thibodeau lets those guys loose and lets them play, it could be a great season for them to where maybe they don't even need a plan. I, I don't, again, I don't think that all those things will happen. There's always going to be some negative things that happen. You're going to get hit with injuries yes. at a bad time. So we know that. But like you said about uh, the team two years ago when they made the post, no one saw that coming. It seemed like most things played out in their favor. Everybody was making threes. Barrett, <laughs> Randall, Rose, uh, even guys that have not had a history of really making them all that much. Uh, so you never know what can happen. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think that there's some, they're likely to land somewhere right around that plan range. I, I think they absolutely have a chance to make the playoffs. And I think that that would be good progress for this team. And, and maybe what they should be hoping for at some point is that either that someone wants to join them in free agency, mm -hmm. a really good player, or that they can go out similar to this summer where they had a real chance to get Donovan Mitchell, that there's an even better player than Donovan Mitchell was, you know, uh, this summer that's, available because he doesn't want to be with the team he's currently with and that you can then trade for someone next summer that wants to be part of your team because the Knicks are coming off a really good season or if not next year maybe the year after that because they've still got all these draft picks and that that should be their hope is to to be good enough to where somebody outside the team wants to join your team it's it's basically part of how the Nets were able to get Durant and Kyrie Irving. Obviously that's been mm -hmm. a, a whole different situation and it hasn't really worked out <laughs> for them yet, but the, the Nets had won not at a high, high, high level for a long time, but yes. they did just enough to make their situation attractive to players around the league. And uh, the Knicks should want to do the same thing. I think Brunson is a good step forward toward that. And um, we have to wait and see how it pans out for them. In Brazil, Chris, uh, so many channels uh, in the last season uh, talking so much. Now. Ah, the, the, the NBA Finals will be Los Angeles Lakers versus <laughs> Brooklyn Nets. Right. <laughs> I remember so many people, Chris, so many people in Brazil talking right. about this. Uh, I think, bro, uh, the future, I don't know about the future. I don't know what's happened in the You future. and me both. Neither one of us do. <laughs> so, I, I I really hope, I really hope that the, this team surprise me, surprise me in the in the next season. I like so many guys in this team. I believe uh, so many players uh, will be de developing, uh, uh, grow up uh, in, in, the, in this league. Uh, I just want to say something for you. Uh, New York City deserves, Chris, deserves a great team. You, you wrote na, about uh, the, the Knicks in 19 years. I, I, I am a Knicks fan since 92 because Patrick Ewing, John Starks, etc. Uh, so uh, uh, I really, bro, I really uh, wish uh, Nova York, uh, New York City uh has a, a great team and uh like you wrote in this book and uh a, 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 a before i finish this interview i i won't say again for you thank you for for this book because no no just me bro uh but so many, so many people in this channel, in Brazil, United States, and other countries, everybody. Uh, I talk about your book with everybody. <laughs> so many interviews, I mention uh, your book because I, I really love. And uh, so many people love to. So uh, I, 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 I read this book. And I remember uh, New York City really deserves uh, uh, a new great team. And uh, the, what, the future, I don't know, but I really, I just want Knicks great. I just Knicks want uh, great again, bro, really. Yeah, at some point it will happen. I mean, it's, it's obviously easy to say that. Um, we're going on 25 years since the last time they went to the finals and 
pretty soon it will be actually this coming year will be 50 years since they last won the championship. So you, you, that happens sometimes like Cleveland when they won the championship with LeBron in 2016, it had been 52 years since not even the Cavaliers, but just the city of Cleveland had won any sort of championship. Uh, So Mm -hmm. at some point it's bound to happen. Just like at some point it's bound to happen that the, the Sacramento Kings will win a championship too. Um, We don't know how long that will take. Um, it's a little bit crazy to think that a city as big as New York, especially with how much they've been willing to spend and that James Dolan has been willing to spend and just the, the marketing ability of New York city and how appealing it is, at least in America for people to want to live in New York, which is very fun and flashy. And there's so much stuff to do. And, um, there's so many branding and marketing opportunities that come with living there it's a little bit shocking that it's taken them this long to build a team that could be consistently good. Like the one that you're talking about that I wrote about in the book, but uh, you know, I, I, again, I'm not a fan of any team, but I, I would love to see it just for the sake of like, it would be amazing to see how New York city reacts to a championship. uh, With social media. Yeah. I mean, it would imagine it. just even the videos and stuff and, and, you know, I, I've seen, you know, living here in Chicago, um, I can remember the parades that they had here for the bulls in the 1990s. And, but that <laughs> was something that people in Chicago got used to because the bulls were so dominant with Michael Jordan. Um, but I feel like the thing I could compare it to for the Knicks living in Chicago, I have friends that are fans of the Chicago Cubs who went a hundred and what was it? 116 years without winning mm-hmm. a championship. And so, you know, these people that had parents and grandparents and great grandparents that died waiting for the team to win. And it, it, it's funny to think about because it kind of sounds silly that people would be such big fans of a team that never wins, but it's actually very emotional for people that, you know, that have waited that long and in some cases have died waiting. Um, that people in Chicago were like going to cemeteries and putting their radios, like their, their big, you know, the old school radios that you have next to graves and in the cemetery for their grandparents and stuff like that. So that they could like hear the Cubs win the championship. Uh, And just to think about that, even though I don't have a, I'm not a fan in the NBA Mm -hmm. of any team, thinking about that gives me goosebumps just because I know that it's, it's very important how much it means to people. Um, so I, I hope for everyone's sake and I, not just Knicks fans, but like, I hope everybody gets to experience their team win a championship at least once, um, especially for the fans that have waited their whole lives to experience it. So um, I don't think that that I'll just be honest. I don't think that will be this year. I'd be a little bit surprised if it's even next year, but um, at some point I know it will happen for Knicks fans and I will, I will be very, very happy for Knicks fans once they get to experience that because I feel like every fan, particularly the ones that wait and and wait and wait and wait, uh, really deserve to have that uh, patience uh, kind of rewarded at some point. Uh, it's complicated, Chris, because uh, I am tired uh, with the jokes. Man, sure. Knicks, 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 uh, people loves, loves making jokes with, with, with us. It's complicated, bro, because I, I remember this team giant in, in 19 years. Uh, it's a great team. So, uh, first, uh, uh, so many years. Uh, uh, you mentioned Charlie Ward. Uh, Patrick Ewing, Alan Houston, so many great guys uh, mm-hmm. play in Knicks. Uh, but uh, I, I, I talked with you. I, I, I really hope uh, Knicks fans deserve, bro, uh, a better team. Okay. Uh, I believe in, in three years, this team uh, has a chance, uh, a contender again. But I love this team, Chris. I love this team. I I, I don't uh, I don't um, make this channel, and uh, I I am a Nick fan uh, because Nick wins. I am Nick Nick fan because I love I I I love New York Knicks. Okay, 
uh, it's easy uh, become a Golden State Warriors fans. Uh, but uh, uh, this feeling uh, is passion uh, and Nick fans is loyal with your, your team. Now. Love your team. Uh, and uh, I, 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 I see the, this passion in soccer in Brazil, like uh, uh, teams, for example, Flamengo, uh, Corinthians, teams, uh, teams uh, from soccer in Brazil. So, but uh, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't say more nothing about this. I just want this team uh, great. And Chris, uh, I, I, I just want to say thank you about, uh, again, uh, in this channel. Really happy, really happy. I talked with you, uh, uh, was a fast interview, <laughs> one hour. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. thank you so much for Sorry. having me. No, it's that's okay. I, I appreciate you wanting to have me back on, and I appreciate you for being such a big fan and, and big supporter of my work. Uh, I, I know that you were a big Knicks fan, but that does not obligate you or require you to be a, a big fan and big supporter of my work. So thank you so much again for, for buying my book. Uh, I know how much you promoted it on your show <laughs> and, and, and thank you for taking the time to read it. I, it's funny, man. Like, um, I think a couple of weeks ago, one of my agents came to me and said that, uh, there was a Japanese publisher that was willing to make a deal with my publisher for the ability to publish the book in Japanese. And Whoa. while I'm very happy that they did that, I'm like, could you guys work on Spanish, like Portuguese? Like, cause there's a lot of fans that speak those languages that would probably really love to read the book. So I'm, I'm hopeful now that with the deal with, with spike and, and the fact that it's going to be made into a docu-series kind of like the last dance, my, my hope is that, um, that it will get translated into more languages so that you don't have to. And, and I know that you're very, very good with English. Obviously we've done this whole interview in English, but I would love for people to be able to read it in their native languages so that it's not as, as difficult, not as much of a, um, a process for them to have to read it. Um, my, my girlfriend um, is Dominican and uh, her father does not oh, speak very much oh. English. Um, so, you know, like I, I'm just desperate for them to put the book in Spanish even so that he can read it. Um, I'm, I'm also desperate for the documentary itself to come out so that, uh, you know, people can listen to it and hear it in their own languages as opposed to just English as well, or, or you know, or at least make use of the, um, of the subtitles so that it, it can be something they can experience in their own language as opposed to having to hear it through English only. So I, but I really appreciate you taking the time to, to have me on and for you uh, rooting for me as much as you have and, and cheering me on as much as you have. It means a lot. Victor. Thank you. No, no, no. Ma can imagine. Uh, I just want to say one thing. Uh, people need to read your book because uh, has uh, so many great histories. Uh, I, I don't know so much here. Uh, for example, uh, I, I uh, stay in my mind. Uh, you wrote about uh, Pat Riley, uh, uh, history uh, about uh, your wife now, but uh, in the past it was a girlfriend. In the first date, <laughs> Pat Riley <laughs> bring your girlfriend in the, a box. <laughs> uh, follow a boxing match uh, yeah yes box match in the fo uh, follows blood in the in the your girlfriend pat riley whoa i lost my girlfriend i lost my girlfriend and no uh, uh she she likes so much and pat riley it's my it's uh i i know she's uh for for my whole life Bro, mm -hmm. I love this part. I love this part. <laughs> Stay in my mind because I, I think yeah. funny. And yeah. I just, has uh, so many stories. People need, really need to uh, read this book because uh, it's a um, uh, class, class, class from, from, from Nick's, uh, from Nick's space. Uh, Nick's fans need to read this book, bro. 
uh, I, I, I promote your book because I, I believe in this book, I like this book, and I think uh, necessary uh, from uh, Nick fans read uh, about these players uh, make history in this team. Because Nix uh, wins a conference, not the NBA Finals, but uh, these titles, uh, people talking so much uh, like in the, in the championship in 70, 70 years, comparate so much these teams. And uh, I, I, I really, really uh, love Blood in the Garden. I, I promote your book. Uh, people... Uh, Chris, don't pay nothing for me. I just, I, I just make this because I really, I really believe this book deserves, uh, like Spike Lee, like Spike Lee, see, uh, that that uh, I see in your book, okay. And uh, for me, I hope, I really hope you you enjoy, you like it, uh, make uh, interviews with us. Uh, I, I joking with it, uh, our time because I, I know it, I, but man, I talk it a fasting interview past one hour <laughs> because I okay. really want in the future, in the future, I, I, I know you are busy, I know this, but in the future, I hope uh, bring you again in this channel and I hope uh, see you in the United States when I, I make the trip. I will uh, uh, talk with you and uh, I send a mail for you, for you know. Oh, uh, in two months, I will go to New York. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Beautiful. I Maybe really... I'll, uh, I'll try to figure out if I can be there. Like I said, I've got my girlfriend lives in New York, even though I'm in Chicago. Um, yes. So I, I try to get there a decent amount, but. Uh, <laughs> I, I still am trying to make my first trip to Brazil. We actually, my girlfriend and I talked about trying to get down there for Christmas. I know New Year's is a big deal down there in Rio. Um, and so we, I've never been before. So whether it's Come you coming Paulo. here or me going there. So yeah, Sao Paulo. I would literally was looking at hotel accommodations in Sao Paulo a week ago. Um, you know, so at some point I know I will be down there. Um my uh, my best friend has been, and he talks about it. Says it's the best trip he's ever been on. So I I absolutely will go at some point. But I, I look forward to meeting you. I look forward to being back on with you at some point when we can make work. Um, but but thank you so much for having me on this time and for always being such a big loyal supporter of my work. I really appreciate you, man. Thanks so much, bro. And I talk with you in the future. Okay. <laughs> Take care, Chris. You Peace. too, Victor. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. Queria comentar com vocês, né? Nós temos agora uma novidade aqui com relação ao Nick Fans Brasil, que o canal agora pode ter o programa de membros, né? No YouTube. Então, eu gostaria de pedir para você, você que puder, se inscreva também, né? Seja membro, seja membro do Nick Fans Brasil. Apenas R$ 7,99 por mês. Apenas R$ 7,99. E você vai ter vantagens exclusivas, vantagens exclusivas por ser membro do canal Nick Fans Brasil. Uma delas, você vai ter grupo especial no WhatsApp, que você vai ter as notícias sempre antes, né? Vídeos e etc. sempre ditos antes para os membros. Uh, benefícios que vão ser estudados ao longo do tempo, que vão ser exclusivos para vocês. Além de sorteios, galera. Quem for membro vai ter essa vantagem, galera. Então, bora lá, participa e apoia o canal Nick Fans Brasil, pessoal. Beleza? E aí pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço!
I do, are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a Nick fan, I'm a Nick fan, I'm down with the orange and the blue. I'm a Nick fan, I gotta stay true, yes I do, are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a Nick fan, I'm a Nick fan.